here of the Ohio High School Athletic Association Division II Girls Basketball Semifinals. Good evening, everybody. I'm Dean Linky. Delighted to be with 25-year-plus assistant coach with Kent State talking about Lori Boulder as we get you set for our first semifinal Division II style. St. Vincent, St. Mary's taking on Dayton Carroll. Lori, exciting semifinal action here at the shot. This is going to be a great game. You have two teams Excuse me, you have two teams that are ranked in the state. You have Dayton Carroll Patriots under Cecilia Broslin, three years, record 26 and 2, AP ranked number one. And then you go back to Edward St. Vincent, St. Mary's, Spiting Irish under Carly Whitney in her fifth season. And they are 18 and 9, but they started the season 2 and 5 coming into the season. So they've really made a push. Dayton Carroll, they have two stars, Elizabeth Bush. 5'8 senior, averaging 14 points in the regular season, and Julia Keller, 6 foot junior, and averaging 13 points this season. You go over to Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary's, they're led by 6'2 freshman, Renee Riley, averaging 15 points a game. And then you have her second leading scorer, 5'6 senior, Maria Dobson, she's averaging 13 points a game. All right, St. Vincent, St. Mary's, and Dayton and Carroll, as all of the athletes are being introduced, we can go ahead and give you the starting lineup. First for the Dayton Carroll pa Patriots, as we heard, they come in at 26 and two. At guard, it'll be Ava Licklider wearing number 11. She's a 5'6 sophomore. She's wearing number 11, she's the guard. Also at guard, Liz Bush, 5'8 senior. First team, all Southwest District, second team, all Ohio. Also at guard, number 24, Ali Stefanik, a 5'6 junior. And then at forward, it's going to be Megan Laris, a wing player, 5'10 sophomore. And then also number 42, a key matchup down low, Julia Keller. That's the starting lineup for Dayton Carroll, as we told you, coached by Cecilia Roslin. Meanwhile, Lori, the starting lineup for Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary's. Yes, they're 18 and 9, but yes, they play arguably one of the toughest schedules in the country. They're independent, as Carly Whitney says. I can play anybody I want as many times as I want, and I on purpose have a very competitive schedule. Here's her starting lineup. Dream Cherry, 5'2 sophomore, wearing number 2 at guard. Also at guard, number 13, Jada Haynes, a 5'6 senior. She's going to go to Northwest Ohio to play basketball. Also at guard, we talked about her already, number 21, Maria Dobson, a senior. She's going to play collegiately at Tiffin. Meanwhile, Sophia Williams, six foot senior, will start at forward, averaging 12 points a game. She wears number 32. And then Lene Riley, the freshman, a freshman at six foot two, number 34, averaging 16 points per game. It's going to be a fantastic game. You're going to have Akron St. Vincent try to pound it inside, and then you're going to have Dayton Carroll mixing it up on defense, you know, trying to make sure that that really doesn't happen. Well, that's exactly as we talk about the keys in this one. Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary's, they have phenomenal post play. They do, and they every single possession they're trying to get it in, you know, either to Renee or Sophia Williams, or, you know, there are two people that they want to go to. And then you have Dayton Carroll who comes out, and they love to shoot the ball. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. All right, of course, this is the first game. Then we've got the reigning D2 state champion, Toledo. Toledo Rogers, led by Miss Cook, arguably the best guard of the nation, has taken on the Thornville Sheridan Generals, as that'll be an exciting second match here. That will be a great track meet match. <laughs> yeah, up and down. We were able to spend the time with both coaches earlier in the week, and even today, Dayton Carroll, as we said, coached by Cecilia Roslin in her third year. She replaced Rob Berry, who died of cancer almost suddenly. She was on the staff, propped her up, and she was actually on the staff back in 2011 when they finished second, so she knows what it's like to be there. She does, and you know what, she's done a lot of things that Coach Berry did, but she's also changed a 
lot too. And you know, it's just that stability when you go from being an assistant coach to the head coach and, and putting that tradition, you know, and keeping that tradition, it makes it all worthwhile. Well, one thing Dayton Carroll was able to mold through the competition getting there, they blowing out teams if they've not really been tested. They will be tested tonight, though. They will, and, you know, it's going to be a, a great matchup, like we said, but I think that back at St. Vincent St. Mary's, you know, they have a, a bigger matchup problem, you know, just coming in and that over six kids that are, you know, five ten and over. Yeah, well said. Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary's, they beat Cleveland and Central Catholic 63 to 29, then beat Cleveland Heights, Beaumont School 63, 33, Shaker Heights, Laurel 64, 53. A tough contest against Perry, and we heard their head coach, Carly Whitney, say that was a good test for them to get them ready for today. Meanwhile, Lori, though, as we said, Dayton Carroll, I mean, just smoke shows. They played the 13 and 14 seeds, 54 to 14, 56 to 14 over Dayton Meadowdale and Dayton Belmont. Walks in the park. Then they won by 35 over Eaton. They won by 10 over Cincinnati Archbishop McNicholas. And then 45 30 over Carroll Bloom Carroll. And then Franklin, I mean, a walk in the park so far. St. Mary, they start the season with some losses. They're playing great teams from Illinois and Kentucky and all over the place. Tons of D1 teams, but they're winning at the right time, right, as they come into this having won seven in a row and still alive to try to chase down a state championship. Delighted to be with you, Courtside, Value City Arena, Schottenstein Center, Columbus, Ohio, on the campus of the Ohio State University. Nothing like state championships, girls basketball in the state of Ohio. Well, this is the, the powerhouse. I mean, Ohio is probably one of the strongest states in the, in the country with the solid girls basketball. All right, we've already had a couple of games played here. Division three, Columbus Afrocentric knocking off Berlin Highland and then Wayneville in overtime over Doylestown Chippewa. The ball is in the air and we are underway here. Dayton Carroll Patriots, the accurate St. Vincent, St. Mary Fighting Irish. St. Vincent, St. Mary in white, and Dayton Carroll in their blue. Dayton Carroll starting out. Matchup, short rebound, and underneath, up and in for Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary. A good start for the Irish. Ava Licklider wearing number 11. Dropped over here to Keller. Keller down low. Keeps possession and then throws it backcourt. There'll be a violation. So a little bit of early jitters, I would say. Oh, yeah. You know, anytime you're on this big stage, you know, the first couple of minutes, you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of jitters, a lot of nerves, a couple of balls. But they'll get it going. All right, Akron St. Vincent. Ains at the point. Again, they're going to pound it down to the post. All evening, a call over the back this time on Williams. So, it's going to be about positioning for sure for Dayton Carroll, as that will be the concern. If they can manage the post, they've got a shot. Looks like an extra step, another turnover. That's two turnovers here early for Dayton Carroll. Pushing the other way, Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary. Dream Cherry will give it up quickly over to Haynes. Now down low again, ripped away by Dayton Carroll. They'll go the other way in transition, left side, running the lane, little extra step, they'll kick it back. Now we'll see if Dayton Carroll can settle down a little bit. Air ball underneath, rebound, little fake up and in. For Dayton Carroll, it's Liz Bush. And Liz Bush did a great job on the other end. She got a double team in the post, got that steal. That's a great, great game for 
You can feel the energy here in the shot. It doesn't take a whole lot of people for a semifinal game to make a lot of noise. Two teams pulling against each other. You love it. Shot from three for Dayton Carroll off the back end of the rim. A rebound and a push here from the Irish. Cherry. Green Cherry. Dropped down low. They'll continue to pound the paint. That is, I'll question the plan for St. Vincent St. Mary. They are going to pound it down low all game long and a block called against the Irish. Good work there by number 21, Liz Bush. Yeah, Liz Bush did a great job recognizing the Jordan team just a little out of position and just go right at her shoulder. And that's something you, you always teach kids, you know, go right at their shoulder because they can't turn up and stay safe. Tied at two. Some early game jitters for both teams. A couple uncharacteristic turnovers. And once again, the Irish will push off the rebound. Still tied at two. Good job right now by Dayton Carroll getting multiple bodies around the post play. A shot from three off the back end of the rim. It'll roll out of bounds and it'll come back to Dayton Carroll. Yeah, you had okay, Sophia Williams touch that ball, you know, make it go out of bounds. But I like what Dayton Carroll's doing. I mean, they're pinching the post at the high post and making them give it up and make it back and down. It's very short. That's Stefanik. 5'6 junior, averaging almost 8 points per game. Both these teams pretty balanced. Down low, easy bucket, walking it in is Julia Keller. And I tell you what, she did a great job of moving through and putting over the top of the head and going right to the bucket with her left hand. That was a tight move. Keller and Bush sharing the conference players of the year. You don't see that very often where two players on the same team winning the player of the year. Nice little runner answer there from Cherry. He's going to be the first coach to go to our bench. A couple of players getting ready to come in for the Irish. Game tied at four. Great anticipation by Dobson. Coming right over the top. Uh, Dayton Carroll's trying to run over the top two screens. And Dobson really anticipated that to get that tip. All right, so St. Vincent, St. Mary going to their bench. Aubrey Marsh, a six foot three senior, wearing number 50 into the game, driving in, shot off balance, ripped out of there by Andy Watson. She's one of the two players into the game for Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary. Right down low again, even off the bench, they continue to pound the post, but Marsh comes up short, pushing the other way. Here comes Dayton Carroll with the layup. Good job by Marsh to contest, but the answer there from Keller. Six four, Dayton Carroll. Their first lead of the game. She knew that back pass was coming and she was right there. She was right there. Hands were ready, ready for the ball. That's a great call. Sophia Williams will come into the game, the six foot senior off the bench. St. Vincent, St. Mary, not afraid to go 10 deep. Yeah, you're seeing, you're seeing Carol come in too with some players that, you know, have given good productive minutes. Kicked out for a three and our first three. 5'6 sophomore. I tell you what, that was all set up by Julia Kelly. I mean, she triples the lane, saw that the team was collapsing on her, kicked it out with a three bucket. The Irish down five. Dayton Carroll fearless. 
spent some time with team before the game, Lori, and they really did seem relaxed. They did. You know what? And they look relaxed. They have a game plan, and they're following it right now. Good job. Nice little pump they created in space, and Marsh, the senior, with a bucket. Well, she did a great job using her body just to get the defensive player on her hip and able to go right up with it. Lori Bolger telling you that Nathan Carroll also going to their bench. The youngster Sarah Oaks into the game. She's got the ball right now. Good hustle by the Irish. Trying to get the steal and running out of bounds defensively. Annie Watson, freshman, starting to take over the game. Oh, she is. You know what all she needed was two more inches. That she would have been in for a layup. So Dobson is going to get a rest for Carly Whitney, who ironically went to Kent State, where Lori Bolger is a legend at Kent State. She didn't play basketball there, but she knew she wanted to be a coach. She graduated from Kent State and went right back to her alma mater after in St. Vincent, St. Mary, and she's been a coach ever since. She's also an assistant AD, so she is all in with the Irish. Oh, yeah, she was a, an assistant coach for Georgia Kubik, who brought this team to state. Uh, I believe in 2014, and you know, has continued on that with that tradition. And like that she was saying in the press conference, you know, the standard for uh, St. Vincent St. Mary's athletics is so high that if you win, if you win 19 games, they want you to win 22. You know, and, and that's you know, but that's how it is. And she's done a great job getting this team ready for the state tournament. Well, it comes down to two words, right? LeBron James, right? When you think that, and it's great being here in Columbus because if LeBron didn't go to the NBA early, he made it pretty clear that he was going to be a Buckeye. Yes. The Irish driving in. Nice little leaner and big minutes. Annie Watson, a 5'11 freshman with the bucket. Yeah, she just goes right hard, right with her right hand. Nice little float in between two players. A nice soft touch. So 9-8. It was 9-4. Trying to make it six straight points. They go down again. Nice left hand, little baby hook turn right there from Aubrey Marsh. Aubrey Marsh is going to be unstoppable if they let her get the ball with two feet in the lane, especially in that restricted area. She, I mean, she's money in the last spot. 6 0 run for Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary. For three again. And nothing but the bottom of the net. Finding it there, the freshman Sarah Oaks. I didn't even know that one. And you can hear the Dayton Carroll band saying she's a freshman. I'm talking ice in the veins right there on that shot. And she's a good one. Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary, the Fighting Irish in white. Dayton Carroll, the Patriots in blue. Final seconds remaining here in the first. 12 10, courtesy of that three from the freshman. They go down low again. The freshman again gets involved. It'll be out of bounds with just 1.7 seconds left. Dayton Carroll's going to need to clog the inside right here. They are, and the thing is, is that they're going to have this sandwich of Aubrey Marsh because they have to have somebody in front of her hand and back of her because if they don't, they're going to get that ball right in. Instead, they go for three in the final seconds. It'll bounce around and not there. And through one, it's Dayton Carroll, 12, St. Vincent. St. Mary's out of Akron, 10. Laura, your thoughts on what started out kind of a frantic start in this uh, couple good runs from both teams. Yeah, and the thing is, Jack was saying to St. Mary's, they are sticking with their game plan. I guarantee that 95 or 96 percent of all their shots have come from the inside. That's something that Coach Whitney said that they were going to do. They were going to have to end every single time they could. And I think they all right, Lori, take a look at the stats. Dayton Carroll shooting 50% from the floor, 5 for 10, including 2 for 5 from three-point land as both Oaks and Licklider have hit a couple bombs. Meanwhile, Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary's, they're shooting 42%. 0 for 2 from three-point land. The turnover story, 2 for the Irish from Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary, and 4 turnovers for Dayton Carroll. A couple of those really in the first 30 seconds. Yeah, they were just a little nervous. So, like, you know, now that they've settled down, they know what Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary's is doing to them. And they're clogging up the lane a little bit, too, because they scored a couple of points against Dayton Carroll in the first 30 seconds. St. Vincent, St. Mary, out here for 
the start of the second quarter. Down two. We go down to the freshman again. Great job defensively by Dayton Carroll as Megan Laris was there. Pushing it up the court is Stefani. And almost thrown away. Good job defensively coming in is Haynes. Yeah, Dayton Carroll came back out with that 2-3 zone and once again trying to claw up the inside. Dayton Carroll will throw it into the backcourt. Keller will pass over to Lidlider, way downtown, short front of the rim. Rebound hustle there from Dayton Carroll as Julia Keller showing why she was her conference's co-player of the year. Good hustle. After Coach Carly Whitney's kind of upset with her player, she wanted that trap on that sideline. Foul from behind there on Riley, and the ball handling of Megan Laris crossover right here, phenomenal. Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that she's trying to split two players. It looks like six. Laris will finish the first one. Comes into this game averaging 7.7 points, 2.9 rebounds per game, and just under one assist per game. The 5'10 sophomore hits them both. for the Irish. Great job boxing out by Dayton Carroll. The Patriots strong right now and fouled underneath. Doing it all is Liz Bush. I tell you, Liz Bush was bound to determine to get that rebound from coast to coast. She was taking on the whole Irish team because she was getting to the rim no matter what. Good job. Liz Bush with the line to shoot two. Her team on top by four. I missed the first one. And with the second, the lead is five with 650 remaining here in the second. Haynes, Dobson, Brooks, Riley, and Marsh out there for the Irish. Down to Marsh, will turn around. Again, the positioning, solid, good pressure though from the freshman, stealing one away. Remember that point, that's a big point there from Riley. And, and, and you know what? They came in and they got the rebound and they are stopping Dayton Carroll from their transition game because they are doubling off that rebound. The lead is three. Three-point attempt there for Laris Short. And charge called against, I think right in front of us here. Yeah, it was on Riley. She just ran, she just ran over when she, after she passed the ball. That's her second, and both of them were kind of away from the action a little bit, so that's going to be a concern. Yeah, you don't want to pick up a cheap foul, especially since you do the basket. Good by her bush, Stefani, Lairs, and Keller. Short jumpers. That shot is a tough one to make, and Stefani makes it look easy. That, that's a lost start right there, that mid-range shot. 17 to 12, the Patriots from Dayton Carroll on top of Akron St. Vincent St. Mary. Two-three zone for the Patriots as they have gone from man to man to a two-three zone, all geared around at least getting positioning on the shots to get the rebounds, not giving. Akron St. Vincent St. Mary a second shot like they would have there. Turnover though, and it'll come back to the Patriots. Yeah, Dean Cherry, she should have gone up with that shot. She had a great offensive rebound opportunity. But again, she's, you know, an unselfish player, so she wanted to get it four more inches closer to the basket for a big girl to score. The 
youngster Sarah Oates, who has already hit a three, will come back into the game. There's three guards that can handle the rock, including this freshman, who does seem unnerved, no matter how big the moment is. And speaking of unnerved, Safadik, the junior with a three. Twenty to twelve. The Patriots on top of the Irish. Now a three, and there's a good answer for St. Vincent. St. Mary's Maria Dotson the senior with three. It's like I'll show you what I have. You know, you go down and get a three. I'm coming right back at you. They needed that. Dobson, who will play collegially at Tiffin next year, averaging 15 points per game. Goes out of bounds. St. Vincent St. Mary thought that it was out of bounds off of Keller, but it'll stay with the Patriots. Yeah, Keller versus Drop on down the left. It looked like Wiley out of bounds. Carly Whitney continues to run players in for the Irish, trying to find the right combination here. Down five, 417 remaining in the second. We're at the Schottenstein Center here in Columbus, Ohio, Value City Arena. Division II semifinals, Ohio High School Athletic Association Girls State Championships. Right down the middle, left hand rebound, shot from distance, and too strong that time from Laris. Good hustle by Irish kid, up with that offensive rebound. You coming in that the point distribution for these two teams was going to be all over the place as everybody can pretty much score, and that's the story. Foul down low, and the Irish will go to the line. Yeah, that's one nice thing that I like about the Irish. They come in, they're looking at a lot of high lows, so they must practice that a lot. If practice is the high low game, because let me tell you what, that's a, a argument that you have to be very skilled to be able to make that touch pass from the high place to the close field and get that score. Moss with their first point of the game. Kenzie Moss, the 5'11 senior. She's cut the lead to three. She'll miss the second one. Get her rebound, though, back with it. Marsh calling for it. And now the Irish can reset. Bring the rebound off the free throw. And turn this into... Perhaps a three-point play of their own. They will. Stepping in. Dotson with two. And I tell you what, that was all set up by Marsh. She set a great screen for her to come in and get that mid-range shot. So Dotson now with five points to lead the Irish. Stefani has five for Dean Carroll. Stefani. Love that shot. She's got seven to lead all players. She's just giving that little pump fake and going right by. I would say it's a very good They just need to stay on their feet because she's done that the last three or four times. 240 remaining here in the second. 22 to 18. Denied by Keller. The Patriots will push it. Setting up for the three for a moment was Licklider. She is fouled. Lori is a former post player. Knowing that St. Vincent St. Mary has such a great post presence, Julia Keller was ready. That was a great block. Yeah, that was a great block. And I tell you what, then as soon as she blocked it, she ran the floor because she was looking for her score. Like, reward me, you know? Here's Sarah Oaks, the 5 5 freshman. Bush. Good passing here, the movement from the Patriots. Patient team with the left hand and rolling in. What a move from Keller. Oh my God, that was like the Red Sea opening. She had a wide open lane. And then so that can say that she's a very sticky south that she goes left every single time. She's going to have a lot of points. You're right, because that's twice she's been able to have easy layups at the basket. She's got six. Stefani has six. Oaks, Licklider, and Bush out there. They all have three. And calling a timeout right now is Carly Whitney, the head coach of St. Vincent 
St. Mary, they made a run, cut it to two, and the lead's back to six. Yeah, and that's the thing. They come in and they're just attacking the rim, attacking the rim. And then once the St. Mary starts collapsing the rim, now they're pitching it out for the three. So, I mean, it's like if you're poison, the thing is, is that Akron St. Mary's and St. Mary's needs to play some really good, solid defense. Story of the game right now with that six-point lead. Dayton Carroll shooting exactly 50%. They're nine of 18, three from nine from threes. Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary, they're shooting only 38%, Lori, including one for four from three-point land. Yeah, and, I, and that's all credit to Dayton Carroll because they are surrounding. They're like a school of bees. As soon as somebody gets the basketball, they are on top of it. They yeah, led defensively down low by Keller, who is playing a great game on both sides of the ball. So the Irish come out of that timeout. Little runner soft and in there is Brooks. So Brooks off the bench, the 5'7 sophomore is. Make no mistake, Carly Whitney going deep to her bench. She really is. You know, she's a little spark. She wants her guards to be able to score because they Carroll's doing a great job of pinching off those great players. Keller doing it all, short on the three. Ripping it out of there is the freshman Oaks. How do you not like the way she plays? One extra pass every time. This one is long. And look at Keller swat it back. The Patriots doing everything right. They are, and I tell you what, that was a fantastic move. The runner with the girl there, Sarah Oaks from three and how about that stylish little runner? Oh my God, that was great. I mean, she just gets the defense up in the air and two big solid moves. I mean, you're right, that girl stepping into the squat in the girls' basketball. But I said that was a killer right there. Lori, you know as well as anybody now, with so much opportunities to play year round, it doesn't matter if you're a freshman anymore when you get to the high school level. No, they play so many games and they have so many games under their belt. You know, this is just a, a bigger stage. Yes, they have nerves, but, you know, they come from ready to play. The Patriots showing some calmness here. Lead is six. 26-20. There's the freshman Oaks. Not afraid to drive to the basket. Can handle the rock with both hands. But the Irish are trying to actually keep the ball out of Stefanik's hands, you know, because she, they know that she is a playmaker. Stefanik sitting on seven points. Twenty oh. seconds remaining here in the second, as it looks like the Patriots are going to hold for the final shot. Yeah, they'll probably go at, at the eight-second mark and start trying to get run a play. Stefanik. Pass over to Strong. Thought she was going to get the shooter's roll there, Liz Bush, and it's going to stay with the Patriots. Yeah, that thing hit every uh, piece of that iron, but in. Great look there at the head coach, Cecilia Groslin. Final seconds here, the second quarter. Oh, wow. Tossed up there by Stefanik. And at halftime here of semifinal number one, Division Two, Ohio High School Athletic Association Girls State Tournament, it is Dayton Carroll 26, Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary 20. I tell you what, this is a great first half uh, of games. You have the defensive end to say of Dayton Carroll, and then you have the offensive end of uh, Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary's. And you know they're trying to balance themselves out, but Dayton Carroll, you know. They're on top for a reason, and it's because of their prettiness, getting offensive rebounds, and finding that, like you said before, the open pass and getting good clean shots. So Dayton Carroll shooting 43.5%, Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary's shooting 41%. We're gonna step aside, we'll be back for the start of the second half. It's the 2019 Ohio High School Athletic Association Girls State Basketball Tournament, Division II semifinal number one. And it's Dayton Carroll 26, Akron St. Vincent St. Mary 20 at the half.
Welcome back to the Shot Columbus, Ohio, on the campus of the Ohio State University Value City Arena at the Shot alongside Lori Bogner. I'm Dean Linke as we get you set for the second half of the Division II Girls State Semifinal Number One. It's Dayton Carroll with 26, Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary with 20. Lori will start with Dayton Carroll. What was their message, you think, at halftime? I think that they said that. You know, you keep going and pound it in inside, keep offensive rebounds, because right now they're beating um, St. Vincent and St. Mary's, seven of the four on the offensive boards, and those translate into second chance points, and that's something that they don't want. Dayton Carroll has eight second chance points. All right, if you're Carly Whitney, the head coach for Akron St. Vincent St. Mary out there in the white, what was her message? I think it's pick it up on the defensive end and keep pounding it on the inside. All right, second half underway. Dayton Carroll, the Patriots in blue. Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary in white. Shot from distance. She can do it all, folks. Number 42, Julia Keller for the Patriots. She's got nine to lead off players. And I tell you what, you know, in the tournament, she's shooting 56% in the tournament. And you can see why. I mean, she's shooting the three. She's gone to the inside. I mean, she's a force to be reckoned with on this Dayton Carroll team. Dayton Carroll comes back out for Coach Cecilia Roslin with Lick Lighter 11, Bush 21, Stefano 24, Lairs 25, Keller 42. Those are their jersey numbers. Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary has Cherry, Haynes, Dobson, Wood. Oh, and then a miss at the bucket. A great back cut there from Bush. And a rare miss. I tell you what, you know, after St. Vincent St. Mary's overplaying that pass, and I mean, that back cut's going to be there all day. Turnover going the other way. A foul on the block attempt. Whistle going against Haynes. Yeah, she just knew that she was beat to the basket. And with her athletic ability, Stutch would be able to go and, and get this block from behind. Kind of like a LeBron James, but she ended up getting the arm instead of, uh, you know, the ball. There's LeBron James. A legend in Akron, Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary. He's done so much for this program. He's got his other school as well. He's done so much for the community. He has, and you know what? Akron is, uh, you know, so fortunate to have someone like that that cares about the, the city of Akron and the, and the education of, you know, of these kids coming out of there. Lake Lighter continues to be a 
phenomenal from the free throw line as we were talking about. 12 for 12 during the playoffs, now 14 of 14. Yeah, that's something that, you know, you have to practice those all the time because it doesn't come easy to make free throws. People think they're easy, it's not. What a start for the Patriots out of the locker room. They've got an 11-point lead. And another rebound, and now a foul as St. Vincent, St. Mary showing some frustration. And at the moment, the Patriots fundamentally and also just as far as their composure look to be the better side. They, they do. You know, they're, they're really doing a good job of taking care of the ball. They're, they're going after every loose ball. Um, ball handling is, is phenomenal on this team. Right down the middle, missing at the bucket, but drawing the foul is Licklider, who looks like she's going to have it in the and one, and said she'll go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, the reason that she got that wide open lane is because at the same place in St. Mary's, they're hugging their guards on the perimeter. So it's creating that lane to get a, a layup, and then the rotation is a little bit too late to come over and get a stop. Licklider. What a stat, right? Coming into this game, a perfect 12 of 12 from the line. And now oh. uh, the ultimate broadcaster jinx, her first free throw miss of the state playoffs, figures. And figures, but you know what? They end up getting that offensive rebound and Coach Graz and called a, a wise timeout because they were getting double teamed on that baseline. All right, so a timeout called the Dayton Carroll Patriots of the Greater League co-ed as they won back-to-back -back titles. She comes in, Cecilia Brosnan, 67 and 17 in her third year. And then Carly Whitney in her fifth year comes in with a 79 and 47 record. Not too shabby. You know, it's some good coaches there. You know, and the thing is, is that you have to teach these kids and coach these kids in order to get those records. I mean, you're just not burn out kids and you expect to be good. They work 24-7 with this team, with their teams, to make them in this position. Dayton Carroll came in averaging 53 points a game, giving up just 38. After the St. Vincent, St. Mary came in averaging a flat 60 and giving up 49. It's the first appearance here as part of their final four for St. Vincent, St. Mary since 2014. And of course, Dayton Carroll, they were back here in 2011 when they finished as the state runner-up. Yeah, two very strong teams, you know, and you always have that goal to get back to the state tournament. Bad pass there from the Lighter, taken away by the Irish and a turnover pushing it up as Dobson just threw it away. Yeah, Dobson did a great job of reading that passing lane on the baseline and then came up and she was just a little too anxious to get that ball, you know, in for a layup of transition. Full court pressure now from the Irish at the St. Vincent, St. Mary down 12. Going to try to create some offense with defense. And this is where you see the great ball handling, though, of the Patriots leaning in. Bush is short. Yeah, I was surprised. She went into that layup and she had a wide open three on the, on the left side. So foul the other way and going to the line. It will be Dobson to shoot to. That position. Look at the Patriots, they have they don't have any players with more than one personal foul. You know, after St. Vincent, St. Mary, perhaps one of the big reasons why they've not been able to pound it in. I mean, we've seen them pound it to Marsh, but Renee Riley got those two early fouls. She did, and you know, and, and with her size and having people collapse on her, which is frustrating, and you don't want her to pick up that fr next frustration foul. Because sometimes that's, that's what happens with the big kids in the paint that they get those little gnats that are always around you, you know, around you and antagonizing you, and then you end up picking up a cheap foul. You don't want that. We do want to take
tell you that this broadcast is the presentation of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. The announcers and production staff for this game were selected by the Ohio High School Athletic Association. For more information, log on to the OHSAA radio network at ohsaa.org. 5.53 remaining here in the third. 32-21, Dayton Carroll on top of Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary. I think that the officials are discussing who that fouled on because they called it on Julia Keller, and she wasn't even close to the play, so I don't know if they changed it or they ended up giving that to her. More full court pressure here coming from the Irish. Good defense here from Akron St. Vincent St. Mary right here in front of us. Turnover to the hoop. A little runner too strong. Rebound for the Irish. You can sense the urgency here. Trying to crawl back in this one down 10. And all it takes is one hustle play to change a game around. The Dobson did that. Marsh, little runner, nice touch for number 50. And they had a little spillage right in front of us here, right at midcourt. We got the best seat in the house, by the way, Lori. We do. I mean, the doctor was coming right for us, but fortunately, you know, she ended up getting the other. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to clean up the mess right in front of us. 32-24. St. Vincent, St. Mary with that full court pressure and helping out off the bench is Ari Johnson, the 5'6 junior, ranked number 35, who came over here and ripped it right away. Yeah, and I think St. Vincent, St. Mary is a play of a 1-2-2 one, two, oh, one, two, two zone press. And, you know, I think they're looking for a trap and to see if you can get over half court. And the thing that Dave Carroll had a wide open player uh, underneath the basket, but it's so far of a pass. You have to make diagonal passes in situations like this. Attack and then make a diagonal pass. So Carly Whitney looking to find the right combination to make this run. Right now she'll have Annie Watson on the front of this full court press, along with the aforementioned Johnson, who has been very active with her feet. In the middle of the press is Dobson, who of course is almost always out there. Marsh, the senior, wearing number 50 into the game. And then also out there is Mackenzie Moss. Here's the little freshman as she is fouled by Moss. And once again, Sarah Oaks will go to the line. I'll tell you what, Sarah Oaks has no fear. She's gone into the trees. She's going to take those floaters so she'll pay out. She's the one, she's going in and she's trying to create that contact. So Oaks will go to the line and check out her line. She's two for two from the field, one for one. She's now a perfect one for one from the charity strike. And again, just a freshman, and as Lori Goldner told you, playing fearless and hits those stroke is really sweet. Uh, it is. The other thing that, you know, don't normally get seen, but she has two offensive rebounds. You know, at 5'5", she's lot amongst the trees to get those rebounds. Good extra pass that time coming from Aubrey Marsh as she'll find Mackenzie Moss. And that post play, that post pass is a hidden art. It is a hidden art. And the thing is that Liz Bush was just a step slow of that rotation. And if you're a step slow, you're going to get that call every single time. Moss will miss on the first. The lead still 10. Boy, for the first time, the game not quite as fast. A lot more whistles, more free throw attempts as we've got five minutes remaining here in the third. What a pass again from Marsh. Are you kidding me? Marsh was like a power forward at that point. I mean, she made a nice little dish pass right to that layup. The pressure getting to the Patriots is that turnover coming from the sophomore, Ava Licklider, just threw it away. So 
Nick Ladder, the quick point guard. Pressure getting to her just a little bit. Dobson, Marsh. Marsh wanted that one. Phenomenal rebound. When they need it, Keller, the junior, always ready. Here's Bush. Bush turning, creating. Rebound other side. Good minutes coming from Johnson. That was a good job by Audrey Marsh not to foul in that situation. She just stood the ground, had her hands straight up, and it ended up being a, a good defensive play out of it. The lead is a semifinal number one of the Division II Girls State Championship for the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Ripped away, a turnover for the Irish. Great pass forward, but too strong as Stefanik was trying to find the youngster Oaks. Yeah, she was just trying to thread that needle right there and just a little hair over her fingertips. But great run. I mean, Stefanik, they're, they're trying to get out and push it because they're thinking that after St. Vincent and St. Mary's, they're so far underneath the basket. And they can't get back on that transition end. Johnson playing big minutes here in the third for the Irish. Little runner off the glass, up and in. And Johnson with her first bucket. And she's been key on this pressure as well. She has. She's been a little spark plug. Looked like a double dribble. Referees didn't see it. Drop it back for a three. And perfect in the game is Sarah Oaks as she is the first player at double figures. Seven to twenty-six. Just when you feel like the Irish are crawling back in at thirty-seven twenty-eight, a nine-point game. That three-pointer from Oaks. Riley with those two fouls back in the game. Rebound, freshman, and out of bounds. Coming back to get it was number thirty-three, Annie Watson, but she was standing out of bounds. Yeah. How about Sarah Oaks coming in averaging 3.7 a game and she's got 10 already. Yeah, 10. Well, she's doing a great job with this pressure too against the St. Vincent St. Mary's. She seems to be the calmest on the pressure despite being the freshman. She is. I mean, she's handling the ball, you know, with the pressure. Bush for three and she'll find it. And the Patriots, a 12 point lead. Over the Irish. And again, credit Oaks. I mean, she's the one that passed that ball right to Bush. The Patriots will try to push it off the rebound. One extra pass, a little pump fake push was open, but instead checking it back is Licklider. Yeah, Licklider did a great job there, seeing that there was one against two in that position. Extra pass, another three. Oaks able to find. Stefanik, and all of a sudden the Patriots reigning threes. They're up by 15. The Patriots 7 for 15 from the three-point line. They lead at 43-28. Rebound coming again for the Patriots. They'll push. This is textbook. This is why you practice early on. An extra pass over to Oaks. That's the first drill you start doing in practice, right? You run it three on two, two on one, and we're seeing it right there. It's textbook. I mean, it was lay down pass, nice uncontested layup. The one thing after the St. Vincent St. Mary's looks a little tired right now. You know, and I think they're exerting so much energy on that press and trying to get the pass that Dave Carroll has nothing to do. Lose, they're coming in like, we're going to run the ball. Dayton Carroll, 45, Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary, 28, and off the bench for Dayton Carroll and Cecilia Groslin, number three, Sarah Oaks, the freshman with 12 points, four for four from the field, two for two from distance, two for two from the line, two rebounds, one assist. I don't know what she was thinking. She has one turnover in this game. <laughs> Stefani's got 10.
Keller, who looks to me to be the best basketball player out there, has nine, and then Licklider and Bush have six. Great balance from the Patriots. It is great balance, and, and then you look, you know, they have 15, sorry, let me tap, sorry, eight offensive rebounds. You know, it, that's where they're getting a lot of their points, but they're getting a lot of points in this third quarter in transition. All right, so 122 remaining here in the third. Back into that 2 3 zone, they get a little bit more of a hop in their step now, you know, if they get this lead. Shot out of control, Bale out there for the block, but coming in kind of out of control there was Brooks, the sophomore. Yeah, Ava Lifflater, she just kind of stood her ground. I could tell she was good her high. I can't really see from that angle if uh, she was set or not. So Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary, three for seven from the line, and... They're going to need every point stating the obvious here, Lori Boulder. They'll need to hit their free throws. Yeah, that's something that you have to do. And miss them both. Especially if you're stopping the clock to get free throws. Keller with nine points and five rebounds. Oaks, Roberts, Bush, Tafani Keller out on the court wearing the blue jerseys for the Dayton Carroll Patriots. Dobson, Brooks, Riley, Johnson, Marsh on the court in white for Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary's. Keller straight to the hoop underneath. Rebound Oaks. Thirty-five seconds. Leaner and. And St. Vincent, St. Mary going the other way, and a foul called on Bush as drawing the foul there was Maria Dobson. Yeah, Dobson did a good job just trying to make contact on down the baseline. That's a, that's a smart heads up play, but they, Carol had a foul to give, so they're not going to go on for that. Dayton Carroll finished second in 2011, losing to Shaker Heights. Marsh. One dribble and then losing the basketball there was the freshman Riley who came in with the impressive numbers but has not had a great performance here under the bright lights of the state semifinals. Patriots not able to get off a shot, but they looked fantastic in the third. They have a 17-point lead over Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary, and Lori Boldner. Any way you slice it, the Patriots have been the better team here. They have. They've just been out-hustled, you know, out-hustled Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary's, and they're playing like a team that knows where each other should be. Dayton Carroll shooting 45% from the field, including almost 50% from three-point land, 80% from the free throw line. They've got 25 rebounds. Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary, just 17 rebounds, shooting just 37%, 37% from the charity stripe as well. And then the turnover story, Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary, 10 turnovers. Dayton Care also with nine, so I guess that's a wash. It's kind of a wash, but you know what? Those 10 turnovers, some of them came in crucial situations. So, you know, they're turning it over on a, a charge, just throw the ball out of bounds. But, you know, when you get the Dayton Care all out scores, they get to say there is 19 to 8 in this quarter. Six different players have scored for the Patriots, led by their freshman Sarah Oaks with 12, Stefani's got 10, Keller's got 9, Licklider and Bush with 6, and then Laris with a bucket. Great balance from the Patriots, an extra step off the bench for Johnson. 
as Akron St. Vincent St. Mary, they've gone 10 deep trying to find the answer. Yeah, that was just an unforced turnover right there, just slide your back foot. Let's see, St. Carroll did a great job of overplaying the guards and they couldn't get the ball to her. So we'll see if the Patriots will try to take some of the air out of the ball. A little pressure there and a turnover. It'll come back to Akron St. Vincent St. Mary. You got to give them a whole lot of credit. They're not hanging their heads. They're still bringing some pressure. All the bringing pressure, the thing that I like about it is they're, they're double teaming on the sideline. So in reality, you have three defenders on you, and it's hard to get the ball to your teammates. Akron St. Vincent St. Mary is their wall, their big. Extra pass down low to Marsh. Short rebound up and in by the Irish. Finish there by Sophia Williams. Yes, yeah, she did a great job of getting that offensive rebound. She actually came from the three point line to get that rebound and ended up getting it in. No one touched her. Sophia Williams came in averaging 12 points a game. Riley, 16 points per game. Both of them have been kept pretty silent here, though, by the Patriots. Yeah, and I think it has a lot to do with the, the double team and the, and the host. And, you know, just making their shots, you know, almost impossible to get. Extra pass, and then the finish by Keller. She's in double digits. It's hard not to like the play of Julia Keller wearing 42. Yeah, step on it, step, set that up. I mean, she threw the defense, saw Keller come down on it, just laid it down, died, and ended up getting that nice little bucket. Extra pass and the bucket finished there by Mackenzie Moss, and it's 47-32. Yeah, this is time where I can say this is a very has to book it down. They have to go right out the basket. And Coming into the game, Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary's, the Fighting Irish, led by their six foot two post player, all inland first team, 16 points per game and nine rebounds, Lene Riley, and we have barely seen her on the court. some pressure they do it good defense here Julian out of trouble still a little frantic with it though losing the basketball timeout called I'm not sure really the Patriots have possession to call timeout but they get the whistle from the far side official with Cecilia Groslin, the head coach. She went to Maryland. She was a military daughter, got into basketball over at the Ramstein Air Force Base outside of Frankfurt, Germany, where her father was a lieutenant colonel. And we thank him for his service as that's where she started coaching basketball. And boy, she is a pretty impressive head coach. Swatted away there by the Irish. The only problem is the Patriots will keep possession. Yeah, it's a great out-of-bounds play. You know, you always have to make sure that you know where the inbounder is going. But Dawson did a great job at coming in and helping swat that ball away. Great ball handling by Stefanik. Yeah, Jada, Jada hands is, is she's going after it. Lake Lighter. A lot of dribbling. Picks up her dribble. Wide open. Keller, is she going to go? She is. And at first, I didn't think there was a foul. Keller may have been bailed out. And she was. She'll go to the line to shoot two. I felt like 
like it was clean. I mean, Julia Keller turned around and was like, wait a second, I'm wide open. And that hesitation then allowed Moss to close down. She missed the first. You know, they say ball don't lie. <laughs> Dean Linky, along with Lori Bodner, delighted to be with you here for our video screen, courtesy of Tim Street and the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Delighted to be with you for both Division II semifinals tonight here in Columbus, Ohio. Dayton Carroll, impressive. A 48-32 lead with 5.34 remaining in the game. Yeah, I would say there's just overpassing the ball right now. Like hot potato, I don't know which one wants it. You know, they need to get the ball into Marsh. She's been a, a, a scorer for them. Three in, and when you need a big bucket, count on your senior, Maria Dobson, to give you one. Yeah, if they just set that up, I mean, it was a nice pass. Her feet were set. She was ready for the ball, and that's all that matters, a shooter. Looked like a travel on Bush. They didn't call it, and Laris was there for a bucket as this balanced scoring continues for the Pages. The lead still 15. That's one thing you teach is teach a big kid you never bring the ball down because you always have five, six, five, five guards that are ready there to take it away. And that's exactly what happened with, with Marsh. She brought the ball down and ended up getting it taken away. It's interesting spending time with Cecilia Groslin before the game. I had written down speed, size, and strength, and she said, no, we don't have the size, we have athleticism. And Keller has shown that wearing that 42 jersey. She was ready for the challenge for the big post players from the Fighting Irish. She was, and you know what, and she is battling. I mean, she's used her body. She's going after every single one of those Atkinson and St. Mary's girls. She's not backing down. Job. Here she is, Keller, going to the bucket. She's going to get caught from traveling as the ball got stuck on her hip. Yeah, that's a good testament, a testament of Marsh. I mean, she ended up going right out there and making her travel. Fighting Irish need to get moving here. Dobson going to try to do it all by herself. Loose ball underneath, and it'll stay with St. Vincent, St. Mary. Yeah, I thought Dawson, she had a wide open three. She, just, she hit one earlier. She decided to take it in. I don't know if you call it trees, but you know, take it into the big from Dayton Carroll. All right, when A. Riley came into the game averaging 16 points, nine rebounds a game, is back in there. She's got it. Riley with just two points in the game. Dobson has 10 to lead the Fighting Irish. They try to find Riley and can't. And pushing it is Bush. Liz Bush. Bush and Keller, the co-conference players of the year. Irish are going to be forced to start fouling as you see there, Coach Groslin. Interesting, she was an assistant coach, and Ashley DePorter was a freshman on that team in 2011. She's now part of the staff, and Mike Austria, his daughter Kelly, was a part of that staff, went on to play at Dayton and the ties that bind this family here is pretty strong. It, it is, and what a great family, the Austria family. And, you know, they do a great job. And she was, she was a very good player for Dayton Kelly, and I remember her playing on that team. She, she could light it up, that's for sure. 
Now, speaking of great players, when you start to look at Carly Whitney, she said she was a point guard, but she had one job, and that was to give it up to Akron's all-time great player, right, Miss Murphy? Yeah. Dotson, a good move, but she carried the ball to be a turnover. Turnover for Ekron St. Vincent, St. Mary is number 14 against 11 turnovers for Dayton Carroll. Yeah, she's just trying to do a little too much right there. I mean, it looked like a really good hesitation move, but it ended up popping the ball. Stefanik, back from Keller, what a pass, and a finish for Stefanik. She's got 12, Keller's got 12, Oaks has 12. You can tell this team plays well together because that is such an unselfish ball and they know exactly who they want to be. She just laid that down right there for us. Uh, we'll go out of bounds. St. Vincent, St. Mary starting three seniors in Haynes, Williams, and Dobson. But they played a lot of youngsters. As they're speaking of youngsters, Oaks goes down. Yeah, Sydney Corina just came and lost her balance and ended up tumbling over Stefanik. She goes back to the line. So Oaks, who has started some games, she filled in earlier this season when Ava Licklider was out with an ankle injury. Oaks earned some starting time, and I know I'm not surprised. <laughs> She'll go to the line and continue her perfection. She's got 13 to lead all players. Stefanik and Keller both with 12. And the lead is 21 as the Patriots are going to be in the championship game for Division Two. An air ball picked up, and now we'll see the Patriots just try to run out this final 230. Dobson, Dobson comes in hard. Yeah, Dobson's out there. She's trying to foul so they can stop the clock and get, you know, get another offensive position, uh, possession. Don't forget, coming up here on our video presentation of the Division II Ohio High School Athletic Association Girls State Basketball Tournament, the Thornville Sheridan Generals at 25-2, and, and Toledo Rogers, the Lady Rams, your reigning D2 state champs. That'll be our second game. That'll be a great game. Toledo Rogers brings back eight kids from last year's team, so they have a little bit of that experience. Yeah, they come in averaging 71.2 points per game, Toledo Rogers, giving up under 40 a game. Thornville, same thing, school record, fewest points allowed. They only gave up 33.8 points per game while averaging 60, so that could be... That could be an interesting game. We'll see how that defensive uh, presence helps uh, Sheridan. Stefanik misses the second, 56-35. Shot from distance as you're seeing Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary go even deeper to their bench, which is it's a good thing to see some of these players get in there. As you see Sydney Cornick, the senior, get a chance to play a little bit here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Maria Dobson is leaving it all out on the floor right now. You know, as a senior, you want to do that. You never want to have any regrets, you know, in your game. I'll tell you what, that young lady has played her heart out today. Jill Roberts, player number 13, has come into the game. I understand she's got D1 soccer potential. Dobson staying with it. Dobson driving up. Little leaner rolls out. Out of bounds, it'll stay with the Irish. A well-deserved round of applause, I think, if you're Patriots fans, for number 42, Julia Keller, who will lead with 12 points. And, the, and she has been playing well. I mean, she's been playing well. She's been playing well. 
has not come out of the game once until now. So she deserves a, she deserves that break with a, a minute 48 to go. She's a phenomenal basketball player. You know a good basketball player when you see one. Kara, Julia Keller is one of those. She is. You know, she's very versatile. She can take it to the hole. She shoots the three. She's very skilled. She has a, a lot of, um, I, I don't even know, she does the little things. Her hands are always around the ball, whether she's getting a rebound or tipping it out. She had a great game today. Samaria Murray, six-foot senior, wearing number 42. Going to get a run here for Carly Whitney. And you know Coach Whitney will have this team right back in the middle of it next year as well, but just ran into a better team here, Dayton Carroll. As you said, that extra pass discipline, as a coach, you must appreciate that so much. Oh, you do. I mean, it just shows the, the team effort, and, and they just work so well together. Dobson going to try to clean it up. Good hustle by the Patriots to try to get the rebound. It will be a foul called against the Fighting Irish on the youngster, Annie Watson. And Both teams just out there playing their hearts out right now. You know, it doesn't matter what the score is. They just want to go out. You know, they haven't hung their heads. They haven't stopped playing. They're going, still going after every loose ball. It's a big opportunity here for... Bree Van Meter, 5'10", sophomore, doesn't play a whole lot, goes to the line. You just want to get your name in the paper, right, with one. Let's see if she can make the second one. She does! That is big! And she cracks a smile running back. And the crowd's gone wild. They love it. It's great. 57-36, it has been all Dayton, Carroll, and this one. You think back to the second, St. Vincent, St. Mary, they made a run, they had that pressure, but coming out of halftime, the Patriots, they scored almost the first 10 and, and took over the game. They did, and they did it in transition, and they also did it penetrating pitch. They basically a very fundamentally sound basketball game. Meredith Shock wearing number 12 has come into the game. Also into the game, Taylor Smith wearing number five. Smith trying to take the block, doesn't as she was inside. So the Irish will go to the line. Missing the first one. So on the court now for Cecilia Groslin is Taylor Smith. Number five. Still in the game is Ali Stefanik to try to hold it together. Meredith Shock is in there. Another rebound. Looked like she was fouled. Picked up by Stefanik. And Stefanik. And handle the ball here and under minute remaining. Stefanik has done a great job handling the ball today in this game. So a turnover. A couple more players going to try to sneak in for the Patriots. Perhaps on a dead ball. Driving to the bucket. Extra pass. Up and under and in. And the coach is going to call a timeout. I like this touch of class to try to get two more players into the game. Yeah, that's a, that's a great call. I like that. Just for substitution for purposes. You know, everyone needs that experience on the floor because you never know if you're going to get that chance again. Just say, I was on the floor of the state champion semifinal game. You know, that's a big deal. You could be on the team, but it's one thing to be on the floor. So, Charlotte Rubel, number one into the game. There's a shock. Rachel Hartong, number 32. Down low, shot not there. And that will bring an end to this one. A dominant performance from the Patriots, from Dayton Carroll. They finished the final 2019 ranking tied for first, and they look like that caliber of team.
a 57-38 win over Akron St. Vincent St. Mary. Yeah, and it, it was set from the second half on. I mean, they just put it all together, the whole package. Defensively, I thought they did a great job with their game plan, playing at 2-3, you know, doubling in the post, and then coming out and, and being very unselfish on the offensive end. Uh, they just played a well-rounded game. Dayton Carroll. 57 points in the game. The balance, incredible. They shot 47%, Lori Boulder. The freshman Oaks off the bench with 14. Keller had 12. Stefanik had 12. Eight points for Bush. Licklider added six. Laris added four. And then Thorner got that one free throw. Those are the 57 points. Seven for 15 from three-point land. Yeah, you know, when you're shooting, well then Riley the freshman and Williams the senior the post players as they plan to pound it inside Riley for Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary was held to just two points. Sophia Williams was held to just four. It was Dobson, the senior, who will play basketball at Tiffin, the only player to get in double figures. She showed a lot of heart. Yes, yeah, she did. She played her heart out from the like, jump ball to the final buzzer. You know, there was no let up on how that goes in. You know, the thing is, is that you know, if you look at their post players, Riley was one for five. Uh, All right, once again, our final score in the Ohio High School Athletic Association <laughs> Division II state semifinal matchup. The Dayton Carroll Patriots 57, Akron St. Vincent St. Mary 38. Reminding you that coming up, is the Division II semifinal matchup between Thornville Sheridan Generals 25 and 2 and the Toledo Rogers Lady Rams, the defending champs 25 and 2. On behalf of OHSAA Executive Director Jerry Snodgrass, Executive Producer Tim Street, my broadcast partner Lori Bodner, I'm Dean Linky. Congratulations to Dayton Carroll moving on to the state championship game. We'll be back for the matchup between Thornville Sheridan and Toledo Rogers. This broadcast has been a presentation of the Ohio High School Athletic Association, fueled by chocolate milk. <laughs>